Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ray here and I am back today with another video. This time it's going to be a patch rundown for PTR notes of May 8th, also known as the Diva patch. So there's a lot of changes in this patch. What I'm going to do in this video is kind of go over my, the, the changes and give you my thoughts and feedback on how I think it'll change the game and what it means for the heroes affected. As I said, there are a lot of changes, so I will try to give you a brief overview. Two of the heroes have gotten major reworks. Basically, all their talents have been redone, and some of their abilities have gone over, been gone over as well. So those two heroes are Alarak and Tronda. I'm going to save those two, two heroes for the end of the video. I'm going to give you a bit of a more in-depth look at them. But I'm still going to do another video separately for each of those two heroes in the future, even though I've already done a video on Alarak, because it's a total rework. So those videos will go into a lot more detail, but won't be released until after PTR goes live. So let's start with the changes. Diva has, is a new hero in the game and she functions as a disruptor and kind of just a brawler slash bruiser. So, so she is a ranged warrior and might not like the sound of that too much considering Rexar is a ranged warrior and has been very poorly received. But Diva is a little bit different. Her attack range is a little bit shorter and she can attack while moving as well. So similar to a lot of the other Overwatch heroes but she is a little bit slower when moving. So she has two modes, mech mode and pilot mode. And after mech mode dies, she goes into pilot mode. So if you ever played Overwatch, it functions the exact same way. The only little difference is that there isn't a delay when the mech dies, so you can't um, use self-destruct. And self-destruct, speaking of which, is, no, is not a one of her heroic abilities. It is just a basic ability. So D.Va's defense matrix doesn't function the exact same way that it does in Overwatch. It doesn't block projectiles, it just reduces the damage of heroes, which arguably could be stronger, especially versus melee heroes, so it's not only good versus range. So I guess there's a balance there in design and functionality. And overall, she seems pretty good. Her damage might be a little low. I think the design, though, is great. So as long as they tune the numbers, she should be in an excellent addition. I don't think she'll ever be a main tank. You'll definitely want two heroes on your team, kind of like a Sonya, where she has a little bit more appeal because she has that defensive matrix, but she's kind of like the Sonya in that she just does damage and is, and is just there to disrupt the enemy team kind of and cause havoc and doesn't really peel or uh, CC or anything like that in her kit. So she has no self-sustain. She has no damage mitigation really for herself besides defensive, defensive matrix. And she's kind of just another hero on the team. So for art, we have some more updates on that. Uh, there's a new bundle, so the new bundle is for new players. Lots of new skins, announcers, etc. So the main changes here for interface um, that I want to talk about. If you played this game a while ago, here's the storm. And or if you're a new player, you, if you're a new player, you won't really know what I'm talking about. But there used to be this change or this thing in the game called uh, healing, shielding, and damage taken, where if you were even on a tank. Uh, you would have a healing numbers chart, and you might wonder why that would matter. But certain heroes like ETC can heal their allies, like with Prog Rock, and Tyrell can, can shield allies as well, and that counts as shielding, or healing shielding is kind of the same thing. And that was removed in favor of just giving like damage taken to tanks and just giving uh, healing to and healing and shielding to supports. So I'm really glad that they've kind of gone back on this and are going to once again show the numbers because. Blizzard doesn't really like showing numbers. For example, you can't click on the core to see how much health it has. You can't click on structures or mercs or enemy heroes. The only numbers you really see are um, your own health bar and your own mana bar. And that's if you look really closely on the bottom left. So the, I, I'm liking that Blizzard's going in the direction of specific numbers. So again, there's a lot of changes here. I'm not going to go over the Alarak right away. I'm going to go over that at the end of the video. Same with Toronto. So the first change we have is... Cassia. So Cassia is in a pretty good place right now, but a couple of abilities were changed. So Ball Lightning has been nerfed by 10%. Damage is, I guess, a little bit too high, but Valkyrie's damage has been increased. So I personally was already a fan of Valkyrie in a lot of situations, but Ball Lightning was taken more of the time. It's just generally, I guess, more impactful. And if you miss the Valkyrie, it does nothing, but you can't really miss Ball Lightning. It's always going to be really strong in a fight. And it just gave her uh, a lot of damage. So Charge Strikes... Here is the other change, and the issue with charge strikes right now, I used to think it wasn't that good, but it actually is quite, quite effective, and there's a couple issues why. The first one is because the range on the, the amount of heroes that can be, first of all, it hits all heroes, and the you don't, you, you don't have to be that close to the target being hit to be affected by charge strikes if you're on the enemy team. 
and it has a eight second dura duration and it only has a 20 second cooldown so there's only 12 seconds where it's not actually available so the big issue is that it either needs to not spread so much or it needs to have a longer or a shorter duration or a longer cooldown because it just has way too much uptime as it is currently so a five percent change here is absolutely not even relevant uh, Genji got some changes, so Genji's a brand new hero and there's actually not that many balance changes. So Dragon Claw and Cyber Shield were buffed because they aren't taken at all. I still don't think they'll be taken, uh, but we'll see. And Dodge was taken almost exclusively, or very often at least, at level 7. And that's been uh, nerfed from 5 to 8 seconds, so longer it takes longer to get charges. And Dodge is just basically do uh, block on steroids, so it's just a really, really good block. Illidan's level 1 talent on ending HA has been has been buffed um, dramatically, so the amount of attack damage you gain from killing minions has been doubled, which is nice. I don't know if we'll see it being taken still, because the other ones are really good, but uh, it is there. Nova got some basically quality of life changes. Anti-armor shells is just a UI change. And then Snipe Master. The way Snipe Master works is that you have to hit heroes with every time every time you queue, you have to hit a hero or uh, to gain a stack, and if you miss, you lose all your stacks. So that means that you couldn't even use your Q to kill minions or to do merc camps or to do anything. You had to always hit only heroes, so your Q could only be saved for that, and that made it absolutely garbage. So now it's just a quality of life change where you can also hit uh, anything. but You can hit anything, but you'll still lose your stacks if you miss. So you, as long as you're hitting a target, you won't lose stacks, which is, is a, a nice change. Zildjian got an attack damage nerf. I don't know why. I don't really. He's not really that great. Um, he's actually not that great at all. Um, maybe at lower levels he can be punishing, but it's not even a big nerf to attack damage. The Voodoo Shuffle is a pretty big buff to this, to this talent. I still don't know if it'll be taken, but that is a pretty big buff. So Varian's gotten some changes here. Quite interesting. Attack damage has been uh, increased. That's very, very slight increase. It's like less than three percent i think um about three percent and overpower has been the damage has been nerfed from 25 to 20 so not really significant high king's quest uh, previously completing this quest would give you a total of 60 and now it'll give you a total of 75 because there were three quests finishing each gave you 10. so a buff to high king's quest and then with warbringer we have added functionality where it now also reduces the mana cost of charge by 50 percent so I never, you never really go War Char or Warbringer right now, but I could see that if you did go, you would run out of mana. Typically, you never run out of mana on Varian if you just go Shield Ball build. Uh, I don't know if I've ever run out of mana. Maybe like one or two times ever through all my games playing Varian. It's it's just very rare. Uh, and now I, I guess you used to run out of mana if you used Warbringer a lot. So this is just a quality of life change. Doesn't really have too much impact. You shouldn't be going that talent anyway. Live by the Sword is the actual change uh, for Varian here, and it's basically going to increase the amount of parry attacks needed to reduce the cooldown parry from 2 to 4. So previously with 2, uh, it was really, really hard for the enemies to play against it, because 2 auto attacks is nothing, especially if you have any kind of fast attack hero. So now there's a lot of counterplay against it, especially at higher levels, and especially in competitive. Um, you'll definitely see teams kind of raging at their allies for attacking a shielded target, uh, which is Varian, so... I can see this getting changed or being pretty impactful in the future. Uh, Probius got some changes, and they're all nerfs. Uh, well, not all nerfs, but it's a nerf overall. So Pilot Overcharge just is the talent that's pretty much always taken at level 10. Nullgate doesn't see pretty much any play. This is only this is a very very small buff here. Um, this damage doesn't really matter. And Pilot Overcharge, the big change here is mostly the 50 to 30 percent bonus health. So the pylons are a little bit easier to kill which means that it's, it, Probius is less punishing uh, when he gets ahead or set up. And the damage has been decreased a bit as well. doesn't really matter. Overall, I wouldn't really say this is a significant change, but it is a change, a little bit of a nerf. Ariel got, as you know, a huge buff last patch, and here they're just compensating because she does she generates too much of her own energy on minion waves or non-heroic targets. So what this does is just means that when she's clearing waves, she doesn't generate as much hope for herself. Um, and I, I'm not sure if this actually affects the, the crown or not, but it is less generation for, from hope from non-heroic targets. So in fights, she's going to be the exact the, I, the exact same. Lily, we have some nerfs here, which is good. 
Uh, although she wasn't overpowered by any means, she was really good. And she was definitely very strong for the amount of skill required to play her, which has always been kind of just an issue because especially kind of a higher level, she's just, there's no skill involved uh, playing Lily. You basically just press any button at any time and you're doing as much as you can, as long as your positioning is okay. So here they just nerfed her a little bit. Still, she's still stronger than she was previously. So if you take into account these numbers here that I'm highlighting, um, it's going to equate to... It's still going to be a buff overall to what Lily was before she got buffed last patch. So she's still stronger. Um, however, Cloud Serpent got a little bit of a nerf, and this Lightning Serpent got a little bit of a nerf too. So overall, she's basically the same. I wouldn't really worry about this if you are playing Lily right now. Um, you're not really going to notice this change. She's still stronger than she was previously. Lucio, these are this is some of the biggest changes uh, in the patch, even though it doesn't look like much. So healing boost, they've reduced the amount of healing that Lucio does passively by 33%. That is a lot. Okay, that's a huge healing nerf. Um, I, I, I do believe his when he presses E and activates his healing, it's still the same amount. I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't remember how it works exactly, but his passive healing has been nerfed hugely. That is a big nerf, and it's definitely going to see... Um, I don't know how much... It, it'll definitely have an impact at lower levels of play, and it'll also have an impact at higher levels, but I could see it having more of an impact at lower levels because the movement speed bonus is more of why you pick Lucio at higher levels, but the passive healing is still incredibly important. So this is a huge nerf. And this talent, I don't really know why they removed it. Maybe there's just too many blinds in the game. So this was a level 16 talent, and when you queue to target, it would blind them. Um, but even so, this talent wasn't really taken. There's a 16 talent that heals you every second for like 3% of your max health, which is incredible like super strong and that was taken almost every single time so uh this isn't too impactful but he does there are less blinds in the game now again toronto changes will cover after uther um a little bit of a nerf not really insignificant and you got a nerf here but it's interesting because it doesn't really matter so the damage reduced from locust swarm i mean you, you you should be going Cocoon now. I always go Cocoon on a new brack. I never take this. And this is just more of kind of an affirmative action where don't go Locust Swarm. It just, the cooldown is too long. It doesn't do enough. It doesn't heal enough. Cocoon is incredibly strong. Um, so this change, the cooldown increase is the biggest change for a new brack here, is the biggest nerf. And it, it basically gives more time for the enemy team to play around it because it had a very short cooldown before, 8 seconds at 1.5 five second duration i think before and uh, so that had a lot of uptime so now there's a bit more time to play in between so this is a this is a, a noticeable nerf but he's still going to be good the other change is better barbs damage but better barbs does so little damage in the first place it doesn't really matter at all uh, and then shitness plating i actually really like this talent um and this just makes it better this also makes the 13 talent better, the Urticating Spines, where you press W and deal AoE damage because the cooldown is going to be even further reduced. So this has an indirect effect for that. Um, and overall here, if they have like a Lunara or a Nazebo, this talent is really, really good. And you should definitely be taking it over the, the Burrow Charge Shield. You just want to play a little bit more passively. Uh, Dahaka got some interesting changes here. So he didn't get a rework, but... The W here was changed a little bit, and he did... I wouldn't say it's a total rework, but there is some, some rework going on here. So Dahaka, I'll cover here. Um, damage has been increased from 30 to 50. Damage is now universal to all units. So previously, the way it worked is that Dark Swarm did double damage to heroes. So even though there's a, a, a plus 20 damage increase here, it used to do 60 damage to heroes, and now it only does 50 damage to heroes. So note that. And then the cooldown was also increased by one second. So... The big thing that they're trying to do here is that Primal Aggression at level 1 is OP. And it's OP because Dahaka has a, a global, right? His passive is a global where he can just teleport anywhere. And he has some of the best wave clear in the game. And having a global with incredible wave clear is OP. It's just really, really, really strong. And it's really punishing, especially um, in a like Hero League or something where there's not, there isn't coordination to deal with it. So what they've done is remove Primal Aggression, and what Primal Aggression did was it increased the damage to minions and mercs of your W, Dark Swarm, by 90%, and also increased the duration by 0.5. So it lasts for 3 seconds, and, you, and then with the talent, it lasts for 3.5. So let's compare it to um, Primal Aggression uh, before. So let's compare it to his level 1, 
with primal aggression as W to what it is now. So now with primal aggression, it dealt, I think, about like 57 damage um, to minions previously, and it lasted for three seconds or 3.5 seconds and it had a nine second cooldown. Now it, ha now it deals 50 damage to minions and has a 10 second cooldown and it only lasts for three seconds. So it's definitely a nerf both PVE and versus heroes because obviously uh, 50 is less than 60 and the cooldown is slightly increased. So you might just say that's the uh, hawk is worse. Well, he's probably a little bit worse, uh, but they've compensated for that. And remember that you had to take problem aggression level one. So now that you don't have to take primal aggression level one, you have a new level one talent. And all of the Hawkus level one talents are actually incredibly strong. But primal aggression was so good, you had to take it. And they didn't just like remove primal aggression, right? Because then that would have made the Hawk a bad. They've compensated that. So he still has, you know, 50 damage um, compared to 57 they had before. The duration might be just a little bit lower and the cooldown a little bit longer, but he can still wave clear. Uh, pretty effectively. So now you can take a level one talent, and his level one talents are actually really, really, really good. So let me look at the, let me show you the talents uh, really quick for Tahaka. So here uh, we have a level one. We can go Enduring Swarm, gives you spell armor and tissue regeneration, which now also um, regeneration globes also grant you ten essence, which combines the talent from level seven to level one. So this this gives you up to forty health regen per second and increases your max essence and you regenerate you, you get 10 essence from regeneration globes so that's extremely strong at level one and enhanced agility has also gotten a major buff so now it also increases the duration of your movement speed bonus by three seconds and um this quest also increases your movement speed up to 20 percent um uh, so and, and up to a total of i think 35 percent if that's correct so these level one talents are extremely good here the other change he got that's noticeable is at level 13, this functionality has changed. So now you gain 25% spell power while um, Brush Stalker's movement speed is active. So that's obviously good if, with, with increased duration of your passive at level 1. So there's synergy there. And Primal Range um, gained 1% increased attack damage per essence. So as you know, the Haka can have 50 essence, which means 50% increased attack damage. Or if you have this level 1 quest stacked, you could have up to 60% increased damage. So that's also a very, very interesting talent. Um, I think pretty much everything else is the same, but you can also use Essence Clause. Um, there might be some synergy between Essence Clause now and this Primal Rage talent. So we'll have to see how the builds go. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, so let's continue here. That's pretty much all the changes that we talked about. Feeding Frenzy also got a buff, but I still think he goes Symbiosis at seven. Uh, okay, and then the last change we have is Sonya. So Sonya's cooldown is increased from 4 to 5, so just a little bit of a nerf to Sonya's spin there, not too significant. Okay, so let's go back to Alrak and talk about Alrak as quickly as we can. Okay, so Alrak is just straight up a lot better. They've done a lot to incorporate talents that were taken pretty much every single game and just made those baseline. So previously, the way it worked was a lot of... A lot of um, Alarak's talents were based on reducing his sadism bonus, which decreased his overall damage. And now he only has one talent that decreases his sadism, aside from his level 20 hasty bargain. Um, so in general, his talents, you're just going to have passively, you're going to deal more damage because you don't have to take those talents that reduce your damage. He also has this new functionality where every time you kill an enemy hero, you gain 3% sadism up to 30. So you can stack it 10 times and you lose it upon death. Uh, and then there's different functionality. So double, Discord Strike now has double cross by baseline, which increased the the range and it also gave kind of pointed ends to make it easier to hit. They've reduced the mana cost. And Lightning Surge functions a little bit differently as well. So they've nerfed the damage quite significantly, but enemies hit by the center of the beam now take double damage. So if you double 62, this can be 124, which is obviously more damage than before. So now it does more damage what this just what this change actually means is that if you're just pointing if you're just clicking on a hero with your E lightning surge, it won't do as much damage. You actually have to hit a target behind it. So there's a little more skill involved, but you're rewarded more for it. And the other way that the healing also works so that uh, you're still healed for a flat amount. So previously it was 75% of the damage done you'd be healed for. So obviously if you hit for 100, you'd heal for 75. So um, now this, this has been changed from 75 to 70, so it's going to heal. You're going to be healing a little bit less, um, 
but you'll always be healing if you hit a target no matter what. So those are the changes to his baseline kit. So overall, a huge buff to his baseline kit, just, just looking at this. And then we go over talents. So you have to remember that because you don't have to take this double cross, that's a new talent level 4 that you could previously never have. And I'm actually, instead of reading through all of these uh, the changes, I'm going to go over some um, changes that I thought were particularly interesting or particularly good. Uh, sorry, I'm just switching the screens here. Okay. And you can see that Alrak here, if I can find him, has a lot. All of his talents are different. They're, they're, they're all pretty much switched around. I think only a couple of them are the same. So level one, I'm not going to, again, again, not going to go over all of his talents or a build or anything like that. But you can see here that he has a lot more, more different talents. Ruthless Momentum, 20% faster. A recharge of basic abilities. I don't know how good that is above 80% health, but like this talent is really, really good. Uh, actually, he has two talents to reduce sadism. Um, but you can see the questing talents and how this works is that, um, okay, yeah, you hit five heroes and then you get the bonus and you hit 15 heroes and you get another bonus. But now you have quests like after hitting three heroes with a single cast, increase the sadism bonus by 10% and instantly gain all the rewards. So you have this like um, kind of achievement awards that Blizzard is now implementing. And that's really, really, really interesting. There's another one at level 4 here um, where after hitting 15 heroes, okay, you gain the damage. But then if you hit 2 heroes with a single strike, you gain 60, you gain an additional 60 damage. Um, but then if you hit 3 heroes, you gain both of the previous rewards and you gain an additional 60. So then you gain 180. So uh, there's also a talent previously at level 7 that uh, it would give you 45 baseline and then you get another 45 or something like that. Um, give you a total of 90 damage. So this quest is just way better. It gives double the damage on your Discord strike um, if you can complete it. Obviously, you you can't always. So previously, the difference that this the difference that this quest works um, than a previous quest would be that you're not guaranteed to hit three heroes in every game you play. Some games you might not hit three heroes with a single Discord strike, but now you're definitely rewarded for it if you are able to. And that's a really really interesting change, and I really like it. Um, well, I like it actually, and I, there's some parts where I don't like it, where you could take this talent and you can never benefit from, benefit from it the entire game. But luckily, you don't really lose too much if you don't benefit from it. Hitting two heroes with a single Discord strike is like absolutely something you should be doing every single game. Hitting three is something you should probably be doing as well. Then we have some more interesting changes here. Um, you can see that, for example, Dissonance was a level 13 talent, and it also decreased your sadism. Now it's a level 7 talent, and it no longer decreases your sadism. So some talents have just gotten major buffs. Nothing to his ultimates has, has changed. Uh, we have really interesting talents as well, uh, like Right of Right of uh, Rakshir. I don't know if I pronounced that right. don't know how good this is, but it's really interesting as well. So it is a long cooldown, but you activate to mark a hero for pretty much the duration of the cooldown. And hitting the marked hero, once you've marked them, um, Every time you hit them with Discord Strike, it increases your sadism by 3%. And if you kill them, it increases your, your sadism by 6%. So the numbers, the killing a hero and only getting 6% seems a little low to me. I don't know um, if that's normal, because if you die, you'll lose all of your bonuses. Um, and you can also switch it after a certain amount of time. So like the reduced cooldown, I'm trying to point to the screen, obviously you can't see that. Uh, the reduced cooldown of right to Shakir or Rakshir, sorry, um, by 10 seconds doesn't really mean anything to me because the duration is, the cooldown is so long. How many times are you going to kill a hero, especially in competitive play? How many times are you going to kill a hero within that 300 second duration? Probably not more than once, maybe twice. Definitely not more than that. So I don't even know what the 10 seconds is supposed to do for you. Uh, and you can kill the mark target and increase your sadism. So an interest in talent, don't know about the viability. Uh, but we do have some really good talents. Lightning Barrage seems to be really good. Essentially get two E's, uh, two Lightning Surges. This talent seems to be really good as well, especially since you can silence yourself so you can reduce the cooldown of abilities. And it works on slows, so you can significantly reduce the cooldown of your basic abilities. I don't know, this just seems extremely strong to me. And it's uh, interesting because the Spellcaster version of something like Executioner, which works on... Uh, which it just passively increases your damage when you attack a, a hero that's stunned or rooted or slowed or whatnot. So that's really interesting. Also, we have Lethal Onslaught. The other big change that we have for Alarak is Last Laugh, which has been kind of reworked. So Last Laugh was a big joke, ironically, and you teleport to a location, uh, removing all roots, slows, and damage over time effects from you, and it would also reduce the effect the, your health to 1, but now it's been changed so that you can actually 
prevent your health being, being reduced to one if you hit enemy heroes three times with basic abilities within three seconds of using last laugh. So it's essentially a really insane blink. Blink is normally, I believe, 70 second cooldown, and it's a shorter range. So you have blink at level 20 on Alarak. As long as you hit three targets when blinking, it will, it will, it's basically just an OP blink. But if you don't hit three targets, you're dead. So if you blink in and you get stun locked, you die instantly. Well, after three seconds. Sorry, so so really interesting change. Let's go over Toronto now. Overall, Alarak is going to be a lot better. 100% is going to be better. Toronto as well is going to be a lot better. So she got a total rework. Let's actually go back to um, let's go back to this. So if we find Toronto here, okay. So we have let's go over the basic changes. So her attack damage was reduced. Okay, fine. And Light of a Luna has been changed. So previously, if you healed an ally, you would also always heal yourself as well. And although the cooldown has been increased by four seconds, and the amount of heal that's been do has that it gives you has been reduced by uh, 50, it also has a two-second lower cooldown every time you basic attack. So in theory, uh, she's basically a battle mage or a battle support where in team fights she's going to be able to deal a lot of damage and heal allies for a significant amount because she'll be able to heal allies for more than she did previously because she can reduce the cooldown the mana cost has also been reduced which is nice because taronda i feel like always had mana problems other changes are we have quests baseline on abilities now which is also very interesting i think the only hero that had that was butcher with his passive where he could kind of stack and now Toronto has this on our W where every eight heroes you hit with Sentinel also allows it to pierce one target and it lowers the mana cost by 10. I don't know if this is a flat reward or you can keep gaining it. I'm assuming you can keep gaining it and you can keep piercing additional targets until it just pierces their whole team. So that's an interesting change. And then Shadow Talk is a complete, uh, the Shadow Stock rework is a complete rework of her heroic. So now it no longer heals and Instead, it only affects Taronda. So Taronda gains stealth and 30% movement speed. When the stealth is lost, she keeps her movement speed and gains 50% attack speed for 5 seconds, and its cooldown has been halved from 60 to 30. So again, a huge change, and I would say overall a buff, especially for uh, Taronda herself. You're going to be very effective in fights, and I can see Taronda just being a very solid DPS hero now. She seems to be just really good, like just a really strong pick now in general. She doesn't have to be uh, targeted into kind of a support role. She can. She seems to output a lot more damage. Uh, we haven't gone over the rest of her talents, but you'll see that they output a lot of damage. But she also has support capabilities. Starfall has, has gotten a nerf, however, so the radius is reduced from 6 to 5, which is definitely noticeable. But, I mean, Starfall was really good, and I think they want to you know, not make her too overpowered because these are all buffs you're going to be seeing. So previously, Tarana's talent tiers, talents just suck. Her talents are not good, and I wouldn't really recommend them uh, at all. So now they're good, and you'll be able to see in the, when I, when I look, or when we look at them right now, <laughs> how good they are. So at level one, we have quest talents again, and some of them are repeatable quests now. So we also have repeatable quests that we didn't have before. Uh, if you look at her basic abilities here, this is also a repeatable quest. So yes, you can continue to stack it. Um, you can pierce multiple targets. So again, a very interesting change. And some noticeable talents here that we have. Um, they, so we're hit, after hitting 20 heroes, increase the range of Lunar Flare by 40%. So that was previously a level seven talent and a very good level seven talent. So that's now pretty much baseline if you're taking this talent because it combines multiple talents in one and we have the owl quest as uh, of course and we have uh, the rangers mark quest as, of course so the uh, the big changes here as well are at level four light of a loon removes stun from its target when a stun is removed this way light of a loon may be used for th free within three seconds this recast cannot benefit from uh, it cannot also remove stun from heroes. So this only works on stuns. It does not work on roots or silences or anything else, only stuns, but is extremely strong at removing stuns. So if the enemy team has a stun comp, Taronda would obviously be very good because you can just cast 
Light of Loon twice on a target and remove that stun. So it's going to help versus burst. So Tyranna does not have any kind of cleanse whatsoever in her kit except for this ability. And this does help deal with some kind of CC, but it allows counterplay for the enemy team as well. Because if you use Roots or something instead, then it's a little bit different. We also have some more DPS talents here. Of particular note, I can't talk. Uh, True Shot Aura is now a level 7 talent. And instead of, I think it was 15% passive damage, it now is 10% passive damage, but you can activate this to double it for 5 seconds and give you 20%. So 20% attack damage for your whole team is really, really strong, especially if you have an attack damage lineup. And it also benefits Tyrande herself. So again, a very, very strong talent. At 10, of course, her no more heroics or her new ones. And then at 13, we have more very strong talents. Harsh Moonlight. Sentinel slows the target by 30% and reduces their damage dealt by 30% for 4 seconds. Again, this is basically like Shrink Ray. It's the Tyrande version of Shrink Ray, which she previously had at level 13. But instead of just a standard Shrink Ray, it actually kind of functions a little bit differently where you have to use the Sentinel. And you can kind of go Sentinel build. But you can also poke, and it's it's a, a reduced effectiveness shrink ray, but it's on a much lower cooldown. And then we have the Toronto version of Sprint at level 13, which she had previously. So Blizzard's kind of getting rid of these generic talents, and we're giving each hero their own version. Level 16, we have some more interesting talents, like Alun's Chosen. So it's a cooldown. You can activate it to make Tyrande's basic abilities attack to heal the target for 200% of the damage dealt. So again, very, very interesting. And at level 20, we have some more interesting abilities. Shooting Star particularly is very interesting. Um, it increases her attack range, and every 10th basic attack against heroes casts a free Lunar Flare at a random hero near Tyrande's position. So you can imagine with increased attack speed at uh, with Shadowstalk, and I think she has attack speed increasing abilities, I'm not 100% sure. Or with attack speed increasing allies, you could have a lot of Lunar Flares going out. And there's also talents like Ice Blade, which you can reduce the damage that heroes deal by just attacking them. Or if you're consistently attacking an Illidan, for example, he's going to do 40% reduced damage. And it increases your attack speed. So very, very, very interesting changes. I think both Tyrande and Alarak will see play almost guaranteed. I think Alarak is going to be extremely strong hero. And I think Tyrande... Well, she might just be a really strong hero as well. I just have more experience with Alarak myself. So that's the patch overview. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little bit longer than I thought it would be. I was hoping to shorten it. But uh hope you enjoy the video, guys. I'll talk to you next time.